Today we are reading chapter 19 of the Gospel of John in our Bible reading challenge for July. This chapter deals almost exclusively with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. As I've read this, what stood out for me was the emphasis that John places on the fulfillment of scriptures. It starts off in this chapter with the main charge with which Jesus is then being sentenced to death by Pilate that Jesus is the King of the Jews. What's revealing is that in that moment, Pilate is, set, is filled with a, a great sense of fear. Um, because I think he, he knows intuitively the, the magnitude of this moment and how this can play out uh, in a political sense, in contrast to the religious leaders who, uh, in a very arrogant way, incited and then cries out, will crucify Jesus. Um, and then what happens is that they clothe Jesus with a purple robe. They put a crown of thorns upon his head and mocks him as the king of the Jews. And it's deeply ironic because he is the king of the universe. And it's the fulfillment of the scripture that he is the one to come in the line of King David, the promised Messiah, the one who would usher in the kingdom of God. Um, and then as he hangs on the cross, uh, it's a fulfillment of the prophetic word in the Psalms in a very moving way where it's stated that they divided his clothes and cast lots for his garments. All of these are indicative of the fulfillment of scriptures, but in that moment, a deep moment of vulnerability that Jesus has lost all rights and he's poured out. He is the Lamb of God. And he's not only taking away the sins of the world, but he's driven to the cross because of the sins of the world. It's the very sins that is uh, putting him onto that cross, that is nailing him onto that piece of wood. And as they pierce him, it's the fulfillment of the scriptures that says that they will look upon the one they've pierced. But before the moment of his death, he drinks this uh, alcoholic mixture of vinegar and myrrh. Fulfilling that moment, soon after his birth, that he was given a gift of myrrh by one of the wise men of the East, symbolizing the suffering that he would, have in, that he would endure. Fulfilling the scripture that Isaiah prophesied, that the suffering servant is obedient to God in every single way. And as he drinks it, he cries out and says, it is finished. Just showing that Jesus is in control of this entire situation. He knows what is going on and what he is doing. He knows that this is in fulfillment and the will of God uh, to take away the, in the deep, systematic, entrenched evil of this world. And as we look upon Jesus hanging there on the cross, what is the response? Those who are standing there have various responses. Jesus' mother, Mary, his friend, Mary Magdalene, um, Mary of Cleopas, John the disciple, they're all standing there and they are deeply saddened by what they see, distressed, traumatized. Perhaps the religious leaders look upon this with a sense of glee uh, and accomplishment. Maybe others are looking upon Jesus with a sense of relief, at least this is now over. Or maybe others are completely indifferent. Uh, it is what it is, maybe they think. But what John is saying is that none of these responses are actually quite valid or correct. The right response is to believe, to have faith, because all of these things are the fulfillment of the scriptures, that Jesus Christ came to take away the sins of the world. And he then goes and he's laid in a garden tomb, referencing back to what we said in the previous chapter, that the garden symbolizing the paradise of God, from which a, as we see in the chapters to come, a new life will burst forth. 
that God's union with creation, with his people, with humanity, will again uh, be ushered in and the kingdom of God established in a way probably never imagined before. And the thing that I really take to heart, and I hope that as you read this chapter, you will do so as well, is that Jesus dies a death he did not deserve. It's a death actually that you and I deserved. It's a death that humanity deserves because of the systemic entrenched sin that we so easily commit. And he takes that on himself in his grace and his mercy. And our response is to then to be pouring out our everything to him. As he loses all sense of rights um, he and yet in control he actually offers us this way of coming into being in union with him and our response would be to pour our very souls our very hearts our faith the inner being the core of our souls out to him and to say that we will give everything to him the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world uh, he deserves my everything because i have eternal life because of him uh, and so this must move us to a point of complete commitment and faith to him so look to jesus and let me know what you think as you've read this chapter